everybody, Monday. Hello, Monday. We're about to rock your face off. <laughs> so much coffee. So I hope you guys are all having a great start to your week. It's Monday and I thought, you know what? Let's talk about, I don't know, I'm just gonna keep punching my hand. Punch, punch. So um, I wanna talk about a gear mistake that beginners make a lot. And now what happens is I saw this a lot. Um, I used to, I taught it in a store for, for many years. Um, and I, I saw this reoccurring thing happening with a lot of students. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make a video about this. And just, this is just kind of insight from uh, not only obviously a player who was a beginner, you could probably still consider me to be a beginner uh, by many standards, but I'm um, also just one who, you know, was an educator for many, many years in person and I just saw this mistake happening. So we're gonna go ahead and dive onto this one. Not really tabs for you to download. Uh, you can check out my free guitar course if you're feeling like it, it's linked down below. And let's just go ahead and jump into this and see what I'm even talking about. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to actually kind of, it, the same big mistake leads to a lot of these other mistakes as well. And uh, I'm going to kind of like dive into the nitty gritty part of it right now. And that is whatever you're buying gear in general, a lot of times we, we get confused, not, it's not confused, um, we get convinced that, you know, we need more and more and more. And <laughs> I say this as I'm playing through an Axe Effects, which has, you know, an, an fit, you know, infinite amount of stuff it can do. And uh, to be honest, I use probably like 1% of, well, I don't even know if I use that much, of what that thing's capable of. It's so over my head. I just have the one, one sound that I made and I'm just like, all right, I'm, I'm leaving this where it is. And what I'm talking about is that a lot of times when beginners are starting out, they get these amps. You know, this is definitely an amp thing. It could go guitar too. An amp that does too much. So what I'm talking about, or maybe they get talked into a, a floor unit or something. So what I'm talking about is something like this. Like you look at this, and this is uh, the Line 6 HX Effects, a fantastic unit, a very, very good unit. Um, but not, you know, and it seems simple. Oh, I can just turn on what I want. It does so much though. Like it does a ton of stuff and I think it's too complicated for a beginner to use. Now I don't have some of the other products I'm gonna talk about. And like I said, I love this unit. I'm not trying to, to dog on it by any means. When people are explaining it, like when I, even when I explained it in my demo, uh, I talked about how easy it was to use. Well, it's easy to use if you're very familiar with using stuff like this. So it's, uh, it can be kind of misleading, I guess, that this thing is so, you know, intuitive and, and how a person would use it. But if you're new and a beginner, that's not really the case because this is actually extremely complex. If you're not used to really understanding what, you know, these knobs are going to do, you are in for, you know, a world of hurt trying to spend the time learning how to use this when you should be spending that time just playing. Now, what I recommend, if you are looking for something that, you know, you want a lot of different effects and that kind of thing, uh, I don't know what model they're on now, and I should say that this video is not sponsored or in relationship with any of the brands I'm talking about. This is just, you know, just my honest opinion about it. Ugh. One of these, so I have one of these and I just dug this out of storage because um, I used it while I was jamming with my buddy Sam Coulson. And uh, this is just a Mustang. I don't know what version it is or anything, but it's overall a very simple amp. I would kind of see this stuff happen. Like I would, I would have students who would come in and they'd buy an amp and they would buy, there was another step up from this Mustang that had a, um, you know, a little screen on it and more knobs, you know, just more is more. And they were so confused by it. I had many, many people come in and they're like, I just, I can't get a good sound out of it. I don't know what all this stuff means. I'm like, yeah, you really needed this one. And some of them would either sell the one that they had and get this, and nine times out of 10, they were, I, I, actually, I'd, I'd even say 10 times out of 10, they were so much happier with, with a more simple amp because they could just plug it in and they could play. They didn't have to be messing around with, with all these prompts and menus. Because it's like I said, when you're a beginner, you don't understand, like in, in the Mustang amp, you can get in there and you can dial in your signal chain. Like, you don't know what a Tube Screamer does. You don't know why a Tube Screamer should be first or why is the Tube Screamer not in the effects loop? Well, you know, all these things. Why is the delay not in the front of the amp? Now, you, you can do anything you want, but, um, you know, like I said, as you get more experience, you kind of learn like, oh, okay, you know, delay in the front of an amp, with, with, especially with distortion, a little bit trickier to use. So, you know, I think the big, big gear mistake is it's just getting overly complex gear. 
and and that's gonna spill into a lot of other stuff that that's gonna happen. But um, with that one, I, I always recommend starting simple. It's a huge thing, but to kind of contradict myself, I'm gonna talk about this next thing. <laughs> All right, now the next thing that I want to talk about is that a lot of times when you're starting anything, kind of the, the mindset, and, and, and like I said, there's, there's pros and cons to everything, everything like I just said, but um, is to start with, with something cheap, you know, and, and I'll forever <laughs> kind of not, not, not really care for those starter kit guitars. I know some of you guys have said that you've gotten great ones, and by all means, you know, leave your own tips and stuff down below if you want to. But I, like I said, I just know from working in a store that every time a student had one of those, it needed set up really bad. So I have nothing wrong with those, you know, kits as long as you're okay and understand that you kind of do need to take that into the shop that you get it from and ask the tech to set it up. Spend that little bit of extra money and get the guitar set up. I'm telling you, it will make such a big difference for you or if you're buying the guitar for someone or if it's for, you know, your son, daughter, cousin, nephew, whoever it is. Um, just spend the extra, extra little bit of money, have them, you know, you might need to shave down the nut, they might need to adjust the bridge saddles, and a lot of the stuff that you might not know how to do, have a tech do that, and it's going to make the biggest difference. Now, the guitar is kind of an easier fix. Like, you can take, you know, a, a relatively inexpensive Squire guitar, get it set up, make it play good, and if you plug it into one of those starter amps, it's still not going to sound very good. Most starter amps do not sound good at all. And I think that they're a huge deterrent and why people end up quitting because it just doesn't sound very good. Now, you know, on the, on the flip side of that, when you're starting out, no one necessarily sounds really good. You have to learn a lot of this stuff. But um, the other thing is I, I recommend trying to get a little bit of a step up of an amp because one thing I think that you should, should not do when you're starting anything is have the mindset of, well, I'm just going to get this cheaper one because if I don't stick with it, or if your son doesn't stick with it, then, you know, we're not out a bunch of money. And I, I, I can understand that mindset of, you know, not wanting to waste money, but I think that having an outlook of there's, you know, a possibility you're going to get defeated or give up on this is a huge misstep in the beginning stages of it. Because, you know what, go into that stuff confident. You're going to be a guitar player. You're not going to quit. And I'm not saying you need to go get a custom shop strat and a, you know, Marshall half stack. But just make sure that your mindset going into it doesn't already have that, you know, slightest bit of defeat in it. Because that is a, that's a huge, you know, pitfall that you don't want to go in. You're going to learn how to play guitar. You're going to be awesome at it. You're going to have so much fun. Like, these are the things that you have to think about. Because, like I said, if, if you go into anything defeated, then there's already, that, that it's, like, it's like a crack, you know, in the foundation, basically. And then... It's just going to keep deteriorating as you figure out, hey, you know what? Guitar is tough to learn. Um, you know, oh, I'll never be able to play that. You know, you start listening to these guys who've been playing for 20 years, and you're like, I can't play that kind of stuff. And you have to, you know, remember and realize that, oh, you know what? They've been playing for, you know, maybe, maybe longer than, than you've been alive. <laughs> you know, I, I, many of my favorite guitar players have been, now been playing for 40, 50 years. I'm just like, God, they're so good. And it, to me, it's more of a driving force. Like, I, I don't feel defeated. I'm just like, man, I hope I hope I can do that kind of stuff once I've been playing as long as them. So that's kind of it. I'm getting on a on a tangent, I guess. Not really. I just wanted to talk about this for a second. So hopefully you guys dug the video. Like I said, um, the best thing you can ever do is talk to a more experienced guitar player and ask them for their input. And um, sometimes it's best, you know, to just wait and save up a little bit more and you'll get something that will, you know, you'll get far more mileage out of. Don't get something that's so far over your head that you can't use it and you spend all your time turning knobs and pushing buttons instead of playing. But get something like me, like I said, I'm, down here is the fender. Get something that is going to um, inspire you, easy to use, and you can get a good sounding amp. Like I said, this little fender sounds great. You know, it is a great sounding amp. And um, I think that's it. So other than that, guys, have a good rest of your day. I'll see you all later. Bye, homies. Whoop! Here's a jam section at the end. Uh, yo, I was, I was kind of feeling that riff I was playing in B. So let's just, you know, B minor, jam your face off here. Let me down some rhythm for you. <laughs>